Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please note, this call is not for media representatives, investment bankers, or commercial bankers, including corporate and commercial forex. All such individuals are instructed to disconnect now. Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Mahindra Finance Q2 FY25 Investors Conference Call hosted by Access Capital Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Praveen Agarwal from Axis Capital. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dell, and good evening, everyone, and welcome to this earnings call of Mandra Finance. Uh, from the management team, we have Mr. Raul Robello, MD and CEO, Mr. Vivek Karve, uh, uh, Chief Financial Officer, uh, Mr. Sandeep Mandrekar, uh, Chief Business Officer. Uh, I would like to invite Mr. Robello for his opening remarks, uh, post which he'll open the floor for Q&A. Over to you, sir. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you, Praveen, for hosting us. Uh, so, as usual, uh, I will go through the, you know, the, the deck that we would have circulated a bit earlier. So, I request you to keep the investor doc handy as I call out page numbers that I'm referring to for commentary. So, let's go to page number four. Uh, uh, and, you know, this page number four basically... Uh, is not specifically on Q2, but it's a reflection of what we had called out as our mission 25 aspirations at the FY22 closing. And these aspirations are around key metrics. So uh, the page four has, has them handy. Now, as we stand here at half year of FY25 and reflecting on where we are at each of these mission 25 metrics, uh, and what we see also as possible FY25 exit numbers on metric one, Asset quality, uh, where we stand today uh, from traveling the last two and a half odd years, we see we have steadily come down on the GS3 numbers, which is at 3.8, which is below threshold levels. And the credit cost numbers also have been declining. And uh, though there's been seasonality that plays out in H1, we do foresee for FY25 exit, uh, the credit cost numbers in the range of 1.3 to 1.5. I will, in the next slide, talk about specifically Q2. So this is more where we are standing on H1 and where we expect its uh, exit on uh, on FY25 total credit cost. That's in the 1.3 to 1.5 range. Now, over the last two and a half years, in pursuit of the uh, asset quality goals, we did make some conscious calls on the incremental prime customer segments that we've been acquiring. And uh, that has come at a cost at an, a, and at maybe in this uh, at lower, uh, at, you know, uh, the, the yields are lower. And uh, what's also worked in the last two years is the whole elevated interest cycle. And that's had a bearing on our original NIM aspirations. So where we stand today and what we expect for the full year closing is in the range of 6.5 to 6.7. Moving to metric number two, which is on the book growth aspirations uh, from the 60,000 odd levels that we were at the end of uh, 22, we've seen some decent growth come through the last two and a half years. And on this metric specifically, I don't see any challenges in the in the 2x AUM that we are looking at for the full year. Uh, mostly running, considering the very strong disbursements that we've had all across FY23 and FY24. I know FY25 has been muted, but the disbursements of the past should hold us uh, in good stead to deliver uh, the book overall numbers. Moving to metric number three on operational efficiency, the OPEX numbers have trended down and we have a page which talks about the overall progress on the operational muscle that we are building uh, and I'll give you detailed commentary on that. On metric four diversification, uh, this is currently at six, I mean it's at six percent currently and will go up uh, marginally for the rest of the year, but admitting that this is trended below plan. Uh, the plan was quite aggressive at 15% of the overall mix. And this number on reflection is something which has not played out exactly as per plan. Uh, but in full dis uh, full reflection, I think the MSME and leasing businesses, the building blocks have been put in place and we're seeing some uh, 
some trending numbers which are encouraging and the recent announcement on mortgages and the insurance agency license which we have taken in have been in a sense a good uh, building block for us to to build from here finally all of this is gets us to our roa aspirations and where we are on roa and i know two and a half was the aspiration uh, we have looked at various metrics that have influenced this number at h1 exit it's at 1.5 but we do have a visibility for the full year to be clearly in the 1.8 uh, to the 2 range and i would still be more bullish on the 2 range for the fy25 exit moving to uh, slide number 5 uh, on on specifically gs3 and here i'll get into q2 commentary right now so the gs3 number while this q2 has been 50 bips lower than last and uh, you know it's at 3.8 but it has climbed up uh, you know from by 20 bips from the from the last quarter when we diagnose what's really driving this spike uh, i'm sure uh, you know the the cash flow situation everyone has a sense of where the cash flows are in the rural market specifically the self employed customer segment but for us what's really 40% uh, of the gs3 hike has come from the tractor segment and we have seen and witnessed pain in certain states, whether it is mostly the agrarian states where cash flows has been disrupted, MP, Maharashtra, Gujarat, AP, Telangana. These states have seen a slightly higher amount of pain. Uh, the cash flows not just in the agri sector, but some of the uh, LCV, uh, you know, the CV customer segment has also seen a bit of elevated pain in Q2, uh, which has had a bearing on our collection efficiency and definitely the intensity of our collection has had to go up the credit costs and provision numbers which uh, is on the same page if you look at it at the bottom of the page there has been an uptick in provision again flowing from the slightly higher tractor gs3 numbers but i think the sliver of uh, of good news there is that what we have seen over the last few years the end losses uh, have consistently come down so the provision uptick has caused the overall credit cost hike but at a uh, at the end loss level we are not really seeing that stress and that's because the flow forward from uh, to write offs as well as the uh, settlement losses have been consistently coming down i request you to move to slide number 6 where we give more color on the gs3 and credit cost what you notice over here is uh, that the gs3 plus gs2 is at 10.3 presently and i mentioned the seasonality which is played out in h1 and also some of the specific cash flow disruptions but with whatever levers we as the team think we have at our disposal, the GS3 plus GS2 numbers are expected to come down below 10%. And we do see the credit cost numbers, which is currently at a, I mean, for the whole half year at 1.9 and more specifically at 2.3 for the quarter, we do see the full year number in the 1.3 to 1.5 range. Right? Uh, again, if you, I would like to draw your attention to the last row on the table uh, you would see that the the kind of sequential drop in the end losses fy22 from 2500 or to 2200 2700 we see this number sliding down further moving to slide number seven uh, i'm moving to commentary on disbursements now uh, you would have heard commentary from auto finance auto uh, players and you know the specific the ones who play in auto tractors cvs etc it's not been a overall uh, a year which has seen too much of excitement we have seen flattish growth uh, and from a financing standpoint our outcomes were not too different so we have degrown uh, quarter two versus quarter two of last year h1 has seen a marginal growth of two percent now, uh, what really is working in independent uh, asset categories, the PV segment, I would request your attention on slide number seven on the last uh, column. Uh, PV has been flat for the year, minus three for the quarter. Uh, CV has been again minus one for the full uh, uh, full year H1 versus H1. Uh, our used vehicle business has grown 2%. Tractor has degrown three. Three-wheeler, 1%. Uh, and the real growth what we have seen as an outlier is the SME business but again very small in the scheme of things overall I would say the market we we haven't really lost market share we have our outcomes have been more in reflection of the underlying commerce that you're seeing in the wheels business uh, I must at this point offer some commentary on what we have seen in October 
as you know october all you know the all important month of october we started the navratra in second and uh, we finished uh, dasara by 12th and uh, you know we have the all important dantaras and diwali upcoming i would say we've seen some some marginal improvement to same time last year for the festive season but too early we are still waiting for the dantaras diwali numbers to come out but specifically if i were to look at some kind of slivers of of uh, good hope it's in the tractor segment where we are seeing a slightly high number compared to last year in the festive season and there are certain models which we are seeing some excitement we are hoping to uh, muster some of that growth in this festive season uh, but overall for the rest of h2 uh, i don't think we can have too much of excitement baked into the numbers uh, request to move to slide number 8 on uh, margins uh, there has been a uh you know uh, i think you've been asking us questions on how incremental yields have been coming on this is a, a slide that offers some commentary there uh, i would say at a headline number the yields have gone up quarter to quarter uh, by 30 bips 20 bips on the loan income and 10 bips on the fee income and some of the fee income is coming in from the insurance corporate agency license but cost of funds really not much relief here uh, as you know on a stock level though our incremental cough is 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 okay but uh, there is a debt equity playing out so we have uh you know we have uh, we are consuming more uh, capital so uh and the overall stock level of of cough doesn't move uh, so rapidly even though we might have a one quarter of incremental cost of funds going down uh i will move to slide number 9 which is on operations and i just want to kind of uh, draw your attention to some of the talent augmentation that we have done as you know we have a very formidable team uh in the wheels business but as we get more aspirational on the controls function and the new businesses we do have to augment the team uh mayesh joined us as chief risk officer from each spending many years at hdfc and some years at yes bank jasprit chadda has spent a decade with bajaj finance and most of this time i mean all of the time nearly in the housing side of it a key member in the housing finance team and he's joined us as our chief business officer in mortgages bijoy has joined as our chief business officer in the leasing business payments fixed deposits and partnership uh, mohit singh uh, joined us after spending 20 years with rbi uh, devender uh, joined in as a chief analytics officer now close to a year back but the other four have joined in in the last uh, few months uh, on the tech and data side we've we've gone live with the new los and lms from salesforce uh, we have seen you know especially as as the augmentation the underwriting and the risk team has come in we have developed new ntc score cards uh, and our bre and bre and los lms for the wheel business will be wheel business will be going live very shortly overall i think uh, there's been a good amount of traction on the opex side as well as the grc side and uh, i do feel much more comfortable now that we have a very balanced leadership team uh to take care of both growth the uh, the growth side the risk side as well as making sure we grow in a profitable and sustainable manner i request to move to slide 10 and 11 where i've given a snapshot of the quarter so highlight before i open it up for questions is that our disbursements as i said have been flattish book has grown 20% income grown 20 or 21% our overall uh, you know nims have stayed flat at 6 and a half uh, our opex has been coming down at from 2.8 to 2.6 pop levels have grown uh, you know 27% credit cost yes this has been a pain uh, we have seen our overall uh, you know credit cost numbers in rupee value term go up uh, but from a credit cost percentage as a percentage it's come down by 10 bips and uh, pat has been up 57% for the quarter and 50% for the full for the h1 to h1 so uh, the numbers are there for all of you to see i I think I should spend more time and give you time to answer answer questions. Uh, so, I've been requested to open up the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Maruk Adajania from Nuama Wealth. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening. 
so i just wanted to uh, focus a bit on the npls this quarter you attributed them largely to tractors but one other nbfc was quite upbeat about rural demand and tractors so is it a state wide issue are you already seeing green shoots in tractors because they were very upbeat about rains and how that really helped their business and that call was just two days ago so just wanted to delve a bit into that and then uh, basically uh, growth has been slow dispersal growth has been slow because of slow down in demand or it's a cautious conscious decision and uh, also is there any spillover of mfi stress into your segments like maybe some of the family members also being uh, mfi borrowers any such linkage that you may have found or you would you can guide yeah. us to thanks varuk I'll, i'll take both those questions on on the tractor side let me split it up into both the uh, you know you talked about growth as well as risk first i'll talk about risk so uh, i while we have seen as i said 40% of our incremental gs3 has come in from that segment i would like to bring a distinction between delay and default right uh, what we see here is in the states which are very agrarian dependent and i called out maharashtra gujarat mp uh, telangana and ap where ha- they've also had a uh, an issue of the late rains which we have seen which would have caused some amount of disruption in the cash flows uh, which you know i'm so watching uh, you know the kind of mandi activity which has been much slower this year because of the late rains continuing and this delay uh, is not for us worrying as of now which will constitute to a default if you seen last year also in in uh, you know q2 we saw part of this play out but in q3 and q4 the recovery was quite good we have a half yearly tractor repayment and we have a monthly for the states which are agrarian we have a half yearly so the stress that we are seeing largely because you know that the half yearly portfolio typically gets uh, impacted this is the agrarian uh, borrowers we do not see the same amount of stress for the states which are monthly where the tractor is used largely for haulage plus tra- plus agri right so that's the that's the risk commentary i have on the tractor side for which the delay and not default has played out on the growth side you're right uh, and i've also mentioned that while overall and this is the year to date numbers this is the this is the rto numbers tractor has seen a, a h1 to h1 degrowth but the commentary now is the h2 because of the first 15 days of october itself we have seen a very strong uptick right and we just uh, hope that we will also be able to ride some of the tailwind of that demand which is coming now because overall you're right it's been a good year in terms of monsoons we just hope that these late monsoons don't disrupt the party but overall the the rainfall has been good and we expect with the msp being positive and the overall uh, you know yields also being positive that the rural and agrarian uh, outcomes for the next half of the year will see tractor having an, a, a good patch and we should be able to ride that uh, coming to your second question on overall growth and why it's been muted Uh, i don't see our outcomes uh, you know very different from the commerce that has happened in the three wheeler see we don't play in two wheeler two wheeler has had a good growth it's had close to 10% growth but three wheeler passenger vehicle tractor cv business used vehicle i don't see our growth being too divergent from the underlying commerce uh, in some segments yes we have been about couple of points lower uh we do realize that you know we've got to participate in segments which will not give us risk outcomes in the near future uh on the mfi stress we don't do mfi lending but if you were talking about the customer segment we really don't have an overlap there could be a minor minor overlap in the three wheeler segment uh, where you know some borrowers some lady some let's say in the same household you would have some households taking microfinance but our three wheeler customers these assets while while you know microfinance customers there's a opaqueness between consumption and uh, credit and you know what flows into real investment uh, our loans go specifically for the three wheeler and we don't uh, really do any consumption in that segment so we we are not seeing too much stress from the three from the microfinance customer segment which is a very different customer segment to the customer segment we have in our portfolio got it thank you thanks thank you the next question is from the line of 
Nishchin Chawate from Kotak Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Nishchin, can you be a little louder? Uh, can't hear you really clearly. Yeah, just a couple of questions. You know, first on uh, you know some some data keeping questions. Uh, you know, what is the uh, NPL versus raw stage three? And you share the data every time in the call. Yeah, the GS3 number is for the quarter and half year 3.8. The GS3 number. Yeah. That's your question, right? No, no. Yeah. The question is, uh, you know, as per RBI definition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Just give us a minute. Yeah. The GNPA as per IRAC is 6,000 crore versus a stage 3 of 4,309 crore. In rupee value. In rupee value. So that would be, that would be roughly... Um, Maybe another 1.5 percent you can add roughly to the number. Got it. Uh, you know we saw fairly uh, strong fee income uh, this quarter. I believe you know you've been talking about initiatives like insurance, etc. Uh, so just curious, is it something which is sustainable, or was there certain one-off this quarter? And you know, it, it, is it fair to kind of annualize this? Yeah, listen, some of the numbers are structural because we have tied up with six partners, as I mentioned, across life, health, and motor. And uh, there is a stated aspiration to grow that income, uh, along with other sources of income also, uh, which are non-specifically loan income. So, yes, you can expect to see the, uh, you know, the income coming in uh, and, and being at a level which should grow going forward. And uh, on ECL coverage, uh, I know we said that, you know, somewhere during the year, we'll probably, you know, we may probably review the, uh, you know, coverages on each of the buckets. But uh, this quarter, you know, you seem to have sort of maintained coverage on stage one, two, and three, respectively. So, you know, is there any any particular thought process over here or would, would, the, would the multiples remain similar for the rest of the year as well? Uh, so, Nishin Thai Vivek here. Um, we would recollect that we had guided that we will see um, some improvement in the overall LGD numbers and therefore coverage ratios in the second half of the current year, and uh, we are we are maintaining that. Got it. Got it. And just one uh, you know qualitative question, and this is really on growth. Uh, I know we discussed about tractors, uh, kind of you know seeing good demand, but uh, you know what about other segments? You know what is the outlook over here? Uh, you know, for the second half and probably, you know, going into the into the medium term as well. Yeah, so on the rest of the wheels uh, category, uh, Nishin, the, I mean, I would I would still say it's going to be a conservative full year, uh, while the festive period, the first half of the festive period from Navratra to uh, Dasara was okay. Uh, then you have, of course, a second build-up that happens before the Andaras. So uh, I don't think basis the overall uh, what's happened in the first half of the year, we will have something which is really going to be spectacular to have a full year outcome which will be very positive. Uh, there are certain green shoots, there are certain, uh, for example, you've seen in the Mahindra portfolio like a THAR which has had great numbers and we have got a good market share there. So we will try to find growth opportunities within those pockets of opportunities which exist. But on a console basis, I think after two years of great run in most wheels categories, we are going to see a little bit of a, uh, you know, a moderate year. And what kind of a growth are you kind of, you know, budgeting going forward in the next two years? You know, how, how are you really capacitizing uh, the business? Yeah, see, I can give you a three-year, uh, I mean, we are looking at with the choices available to us and now some of the new businesses added, the SME business, and you know, we have stated our plans on the mortgage side. We are looking from a three-year horizon to be in the 15 to 20% CAGR. I mean, that's more like a directional three-year uh, aspiration. Got it. Thank you very much and all the best. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhijit Tibrawal from Motila Loswal Finance Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, everyone. So first things first, I mean, um, just kind of taking the last question, uh, then um, we've guided for credit costs of 1.3 to 1.5%. I'm sure some of this is uh, penciling in recoveries from the tractor segment, ones uh, which have slipped in this quarter. 
And the other thing that you said is also uh, that from the improvement in LGDs, we might see uh, release in ECL provisions coming through. So, I mean, the, the second part, uh, release in ECL provisions coming through, can you throw some more light on that uh, versus where we are in terms of provision coverage ratio? Uh, what could it trend that? And will it be more uh, backhanded in terms of more coming in 4Q or we will see it to be more gradual in 3Q and then in 4Q? Yeah, so uh, thanks, Abhijit. I'll take part of it and hand over part to, uh, to Vivek. So the reason why we have a certain confidence in the credit cost, which let's say for H1 is at 1.9, which we say will come down from 1.3 to 1.5. You would have seen something similar last year, uh, you know, when, when we ended, uh, let's say, credit cost at 2.3 and we brought it down to 1.7. I mean, this is, I'm just getting uh, your memory back to last year. Uh, why this number changes and uh, why this number really moves is one, because of real recovery that happens in the second half of the year where cash flows improve, where some of the slippages, as I called out, as delays, not default, right? The collections come back and the overall stock of GS3 usually moderates in the second half, which definitely has, uh, one is it doesn't create any more incremental provision, two, it kind of also, uh, you know, uh, make sure that we are able to, uh, you know, to uh, get uh, the credit cost uh, back because there is no incremental flow forward. Uh, you're right, the second lever over there, I don't want to take away the play that the LGD will have. You know we are still at a high level of 59.5 and, and we have a 42-month average. And uh, we do see uh, that basis the prediction of the model that this number will come down. Now, I don't want to put, uh, you know, get ahead of ourselves and give you exactly that 59.5 will come down to what number. But we have clear visibility that there will be uh, there will be a, a kind of a reduction in that number, which is more reflective of our current LGDs, exact, uh, you know, the current LGDs. And hence, both of this working together gives us confidence of the uh, targeted uh, credit cost number, which is, as I said, at exit of H1 at 1.9 coming to a 1.3 to 1.5 level. Yeah, yeah Vijay, I have nothing to add. Got it. Okay. And then, I mean, the other two questions that I had was, again, uh, in terms of margins, H1, we closed at 6.5, and the full year, we have guided for 6.5 to 6.7. We are essentially talking about uh, margins to improve from here. Um, so, we're just trying to understand, is, is part of this because of the trade advances, which typically were given in 2Q and will get converted uh, into retail loans in 2Q, does it have some bearing on this or how are we thinking about um, margin improvement coming in the second half? And the second thing is um, also, I mean, if you look at uh, our disbursement mix, uh, given that large proportion, good, good 40% comes from PVs and PVs, I mean, among all segments, right? I mean, it seems like it's slowing down now. So, I mean, I mean, while you've already commented on the outlook 15 to 20% over the next three years that you're looking to grow at, uh, including some of the newer businesses that we are incubating, uh, on, on vehicle alone, how are we thinking about growth for the next uh, second half and the next couple of years? Yeah, so uh, just remind me of your first question. I lost it in the second. The first one was regarding margin. Margin, margin okay. Yeah, so... Uh, on margin uh, and, uh, you know, getting this uh, number from uh, 6.5 to 6.7, Abhijit is a combination of what we think is, you know, we have been uh, in incrementally passing on uh, the IRRs have been going up uh, and some of that will help us on the stock level. Uh, then there's the fee income, which also kind of augments uh, the name as the, the name number to go up from where it is currently. I do not look at Trade advance being a big uh, influencer in that. Trade advance has a Q2 impact because we give it and the Q2 numbers go down a bit, but it's not going to be something which uh, moves the needle in a, in a large manner. That's on the margin front. And I said these are all, uh, you know, what's, what's in our complete control is passing on uh, interest rates doing, as you know, the more tractor we do in the second half of the year gives us a lift. The more used we do, which is now 18% of the mix, that also improves the improves the IRR and the fee-based income. So 
so that's the broad influencing uh, uh, you know levers for the 10 to 15 bips uh, increase in in uh, in our uh, you know overall name uh, and uh, i mean i have not factored in any credit cost i mean any uh, any kind of uh, uh, you know fund cost over here because we don't have any visibility of fund cost going down coming to your second question on overall growth uh, uh, see for the rest of the year you're right pv pv is not going to have a very strong outing for the year uh, from a disbursement standpoint however uh, you know in pv there is still a decent amount of ntc customer segments as well as close to prime customer segment now that we have got reasonable confidence in our ntc scorecards and the ability to underwrite ntc customers uh, uh, we 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 do see uh, you know scope for us to uh, to further participation there it's not going to be the rest of the financial is not going to be extremely bullish and we are not extremely bullish but since you also asked on a 3 year period uh, see the vehicle businesses will have a certain uh, growth trajectory for the next 3 years uh, pv cv tractor etc i don't think uh, we will have very very steeper acquisition compared to the rest of the uh, rest of the pack we will maintain protect our market shares and maybe in some segments especially as we have been saying on the use used car used tractor uh, and some now we have a used cv team also we will try to increase our uh, our overall participation there but in the next 3 years you will see our growth largely mirror the growth of the underlying commerce in the wheel business but this is my wish for now thank you so much and wish you and your team the very best thanks sir thank you the next question is from the line of raghav garg from ambit capital please go ahead Hey, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I have my first question on the net slippages. So, uh, it seems that the slippages have been quite high in this quarter, about 800, 820 crores. Uh, what I understand is that for full year, it was about 15 crores of slippages for you uh, on a net basis. Uh, this year, first half, you're already clocking uh, close to that number, 1500. Q3, Q4, because that would essentially determine uh, that you are able to. Uh, uh, please uh, come a bit close to your handset. You sound a bit distant. So you can hear me now. Yes, sir. You are audible. Hello. Yes, sir. You are audible now. Okay, uh, sir. Uh, my question was on net slippages. So last year, uh, full year, your slippages uh, were around fifteen hundred crores and. 1HFI 25 is a similar number. Uh, what gives you the confidence uh, that you know, despite slippages being higher in this year, uh, you will be able to deliver a lower credit cost? Uh, am I audible? Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, God. No, no, you're you're right. The slippages for the first half of the year have been higher than last year, and uh, while the overall slippages in Q2 have been higher than Q1, as I mentioned, largely from uh, from the tractor and LCV space, uh, you know, you can't I think map slippages and credit cost apple to apple because uh, in credit cost there are two variables: there is provision write-off, and there is of course, as we mentioned in the provision, the LGD play. So while slippages uh can be controlled in h2 which is mostly from recoveries of what's happened in uh, q1 and q2 more specifically q2 uh there is a credit cost uh, uh you know outcome which we are which uh, we have visibility of chasing which is uh, largely driven by both the recoveries in in whatever has slipped as well as because as i mentioned earlier we have a uh, you know we have a certain relief coming in from the coverage ratios Okay, so you are essentially saying that uh, you know even uh, if, if the slippages are higher, uh, there could be some bit of a reversal that you might say some something similar that you did last year in in third quarter. Is that is that understanding correct? No. Uh, what what are you referring to in third quarter? What we did? So the, there was some uh, release of uh, uh, provisions, uh, right? Uh, because of the reset of ECL assumption, which happened in third quarter as part of the first. 
No, no, no. We didn't do any manual. This was just the we we did a model refresh, which was which we did annually. So there was nothing that we artificially overlaid over the ECL model in Q3 last year. I'll just invite Vivek to be more specific. But yeah, I just want to uh, clarify there was nothing that we did, uh, you know, specifically on releasing provisions. No, in in fact, um, in fact, there was hardly any provision release. Uh, only about 80 odd crores that was released, and that too um, uh, not intentional. It was an outcome. Of the model refresh that we did, and uh, going back to your question on uh, what will also drive a lower credit cost in H2, and therefore for the full year, is also the confidence that we have on the credit losses. So you would have seen uh, the way our credit losses have been trending over the last uh, two three years, and even in the H1, we expect uh, the same performance to continue in the second half of the year as well. Okay, sure. Uh, my other question is that uh, you know while you're pointing out that 40 percent of the uh, messages or pain has come from the factor segment, uh, I think this was true even in uh, last year, right? Uh, majority of our we have lost last year was also from so, so, where is that, uh, which is that segment where you are. Could you come a bit close to your handset? It's better now. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Okay. So my second question was on, uh, you know, just trying to understand uh, a little bit more uh, granularity of the uh, slippages. So this year, 40% has come from factors. Uh, last year, it was the same case. A substantial part of the pain had come from factor segment. Uh, but apart from that, uh, which is or what are those other segments where uh, you you are seeing uh, pain? Because it seems that even uh, excluding the tractor segment, uh, the pain is, is higher versus uh, what it was last year. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I talked about the distinction between uh, delay and default. I think uh, uh, the the Q2 number which we saw last year in tractor and some of it is we have also uh, addressed, uh, we are addressing it while structuring our, our half yearly loan repayments and making sure that they mimic the harvest cycle so that we don't see this uh, and we see a, a repayment schedule more reflective of uh, of the uh, you know the harvest cycles especially for the agrarian customer segment uh, besides the 40% uh, you know let me first close the tractor i i do see that in q3 and q4 uh, i don't expect everything to come back in the month of october there might be october november december kind of a comeback because there is a Rabi season which plays out and the late monsoons might lead to a little bit, uh, uh, you know, uh, furthering the whole recovery of whatever slipped in, in, in Q2. Other than uh, the tractor segment which we saw in Q2 specifically add to the GS3 sequential increase, uh, there are segments, you know, 70-80% of our customers are self-employed, non-professionals, many of them are uh, acquiring, uh, you know, small commercial vehicles uh, and ply these vehicles for specifically, uh, you know, uh, their commerce activities. Uh, we have seen some delays over there uh, and uh, I don't think, uh, you know, we can be insulated. You know that income levels for largely many parts of the self-employed and semi-urban customer segments have seen some disruptions in this year. Uh, I'm sure you've heard commentary about overall leverage levels also uh, being slightly high and income income flows being a little muted. So there is going to be stated effort in a year like this to spend more, to recover more and more, more kind of collection intensity to ensure that uh, the collection numbers are up. But I don't want to shy away from the fact that this is not, this is not a year equivalent to maybe, you know, last year or the year before last where, uh, where, uh, you know, underlying uh, constraints or underlying kind of uh, uh, cash flows are as rosy as they were in the past. We have to make more efforts in collections. And uh, the good thing is that all our loans are secured. So we don't see the reason why the customers who we have onboarded will not pay. They might pay with a little bit of a delay, but we don't see this as, as, a, uh, you know, as a weakness overall. Okay, thanks. That, that, that was all from my side. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal Shah from Citigroup. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for taking the question. So, firstly, on the margin side, uh, so if we uh, look at it on the 
margins uh, you indicated that there have been some increase in the uh, lending rate but uh, 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 so but when we look at it last time you indicated that uh, uh, maybe there is some shift which is happening uh, uh, with respect to the prime customers and that almost seems to have been done and that negative impact would be lower so are we equally confident that maybe that uh, might not have the impact on the margins so uh, hi kunal thanks for your question uh, if you refer to slide number 8 you would see that the loan income actually from last year to this year has gone up by 20 bips uh, i did provide commentary that you know we have reached reached our targeted acquisition mix of primex customers we had a mix aspiration of 15 to 20% of our incremental sourcing to be from that uh, super prime or you know above prime segment uh we have reached those thresholds uh do we kind of uh, you know do we kind of uh, completely put a full stop uh, for that customer segment no we continue to acquire customers in that band of 15 to 20% and some of the product launches which we are doing in partnership with oems uh, helps us get some volumes you know in a year like this it's always balancing between growth and margins and we are we are aware of the fact that uh, that chasing a customer segment which will give us uh, let's say uh, which will give us uh, uh, negative overall nims is something that we take stock of for every business unit and every business unit has a stated incremental mix which which comes in so you're uh, you're right that uh, this number has been to a large extent we've hit the ceiling on that Sure. And uh, secondly, uh, what you have been indicating in terms of bringing about the consistency and to lower the quarterly volatility as such, but again in Q2 we have not really seen that uh, with respect to maybe the additions to the uh, slippage as well as the overall credit cost. Uh, so that consistency somehow with the change in the customer mix uh, is also uh, to an extent not uh, visible. So how should we go? No doubt you indicated it largely because of tractors. but uh, uh, how should be uh, because that volatility still continues to be towards the uh, second half and um, uh, secondly related to that so uh, is it like we have not uh, reviewed the ecl model this time and hence there is no change in the coverage ratios or the only thing is maybe the kind of customers or the sourcing quality which you indicated last time that seems to have deteriorated and that's the reason it's like almost stable this quarter anno kunal hi vivek here um we review our ecl model every quarter so the pd and lgd refresh happens every quarter uh, so it's not that we haven't reviewed um uh, what we have also indicated is that uh, because it's a quarterly refresh uh, uh, new data comes in for the latest quarter and old data from of the farthest quarter goes away we are expecting these coverage ratios uh, to decline in the second half it is reflective of the fact that um uh the base which contained covid affected period will will go away but um it's not that we have not um, we have not reviewed and we have not refreshed our ecl model we have done it and we have been doing it consistently yeah on the volatility part uh, kunal uh, uh, while you're right q2 for the last two years has seen an uptick and we've we've mentioned the reasons for that uh it is a stated aspiration that we would like to level down the kind of inter quarter movements uh in a business where you have a decent amount of mix on certain asset categories which are subject to uh to volatile inherent volatility like the tractor segment uh we are constantly looking at ways and means to uh you know to kind of uh, iron out that volatility which would be one on customer segment two on the kind of the way in which loan emis are structured in terms of as i said reflecting that the emis coincide with the harvest period but we already have a large book uh, and that book you know you can't restructure a book etc so within a book which is quite large and an incremental book there will be choices of of uh, of playing that out and in the medium to long term it is our stated aspiration uh, we do not like this kind of inter quarter volatility ourselves but we do recognize the fact that some of the underlying asset categories if you don't have a much more holistic approach towards the way in which we also decide the uh, you know the customer segment uh, 
how do you overall build resilience by making sure that the uh, the cash flows are as i said mirrored into the repayment cycles etc so yes it's a journey we are on uh, i think if you go back wind back the clock 2 years this inter quarter volatility would have been much higher it is it still exists and it is as i said our stated aspiration to iron it down further okay, okay. thank you thank you all the best yeah thank you the next question is from the line of avina singh from mk global please go ahead yeah hi good evening a uh, couple of questions the first one if i see your geographical breakout or uh, the kolkata region it seems is kind of a uh, slowing down in terms of aum and disbursement so is it just the impact of your whatever happened in mizoram and that leading to or are you seeing some challenges into kind of a, a wider geography including a uh, west bengal so that's from the first and second i mean you had i guess a month or so earlier a uh, file around your co-lending arrangement with sbi so if you can just throw some color on that the co-lending arrangement the idea any sort of a you know a medium term target there and what do we expect to achieve from that thanks yeah thanks uh, uh, you know i'll take the east question first you're right we have uh, we have reduced our disbursement acquisition by almost 200 bips and uh, it's it's a combination of both reasons as you mentioned one is we did have uh, a complete review of the way in which some of the northeast playbook of acquisitions and northeast is not a uh, you know not an easy terrain so uh, this incident which happened uh, last uh, fiscal last quarter did did uh, not just to look at very inherent practices as well as some of the risk mitigation uh, requirements for that location which has had a bearing in the overall incremental acquisition at the same time uh, when we uh, you know when we also look at the underlying disbursements that are happening in some of those markets i would say that uh there has been some weaknesses in some markets so it's a combination of both factors uh one us consciously relooking at uh at the aggressive levels of participation that we had in the past with what what happened as that one time incident and also some states have seen some amount of uh, uh some amount of drop in overall uh throughput uh your second question on sbi uh, Uh, you know the thought process there and i think abhijit from abhijit bival mentioned that pv is a big source of our segment cv is also a big source of us of our incremental volumes as the segments become incrementally more competitive from a rate standpoint uh with some of the large banks who we don't see being a very active uh partner or active player in the acquisition but still have a lot of cost of funds advantage like an sbi there could be segments in the pv segment or the cv fleet segment where we do believe that instead of losing uh, as i said earlier also we have hit the ceiling on our prime customer segments and hence we may not be able to offer our balance sheet as a uh, you know uh, you know put our balance sheet on the table for incremental volumes but we can clearly put a put our distribution on the table for incremental volumes and hence uh, for this prime customer segment either in the pv or the cv side fleet customer segment uh, the thinking behind the sbi and of course not just sbi we have with uh, bank of baroda and we have with some other banks too uh, the, the that's the logic of the partnerships and the co-lending arrangements any sort of a uh, sort of you know a uh, 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 target there say over the next one two years not in quarters See, uh, I, I, I mean, I'll, I'll be uh, consistent what we have said to everybody that when we get into a partnership, uh, we don't get into uh, uh, you know too many partnerships. We get into some meaningful ones, and the aspirations there is over a medium term to at least uh, for our kind of a size and scale to be doing close to at least uh, you know 25 to 40 crores monthly throughput with any partner. I mean, that's the aspiration. Uh, when we sign up partnerships okay thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of ajit kumar from nomura please go ahead uh 
uh, thanks for uh, you know taking my question and good evening everyone uh, you know i had two questions uh, first what is the reason of sudden steep decline in capital adequacy ratio uh, it is down 180 bips q and q and uh, any plans of capital raise when cer looks to be very close to minimum regulatory requirement so that is first question and second one on growth again uh, while you have already given qualitative feedback uh what would be your disbursement and loan growth target now for fy25 especially uh, you had earlier guided for low teen disbursement growth in fy25 which now looks difficult to achieve so yeah i mean these two questions from my side thank you i think the disbursement one first and handed over to vivek uh, for the uh, other one so uh, see the disbursement for the year has been 2% and clearly uh, as pointed out in the chart which shows the segment wise disbursement besides sme which is grown at 50 plus the rest have been uh, low and we uh, we if i just look at a simple extrapolation of the numbers if we continue at the same rate of growth that we had for h1 the book growth for the year would be at 18% uh, right because and that's not happening because of any recent disbursement but because of the strong disbursement of the last two years uh i'm not saying that we will grow at the same rate as h1 but uh, you know if we see some very strong number improvement or some uh, you know late catch up it could go up by another 100 200 300 basis point not more than that uh, for the full year uh, so there is a disbursement number which is going to be flattish or muted uh, for the year uh, but the book number will still gain from the past disbursements and i've given you my aspirations for the 3 year cagr uh, so you know by that time we should have some other levers at our disposal with the new businesses to achieve that kind of a of a cagr we will go to yeah so on your first question on the capital adequacy ratio uh, in in the second quarter there has been a dividend payout to the shareholders which is one of the reasons why um, our net on net owned funds have come down the other reason is if you look at a sequential growth in the asset base it has increased by about 5.7% and that also increases the financial leverage which brings the crr down however um, uh, our uh, tier 1 capital continues to be near the 15% mark against uh, the regulatory uh, floor which is 9% so we are very comfortable out there so at least in the current financial year um i don't see a reason uh, for raising any fresh equity sure sure thank you everyone thank you thank you the next question is from the line of rao shwan from sconfeld please go ahead hey thank you for the opportunity <clears throat> just following up on the growth side um if we still expect you know flatish to maybe single digit grow for this year um you know what's your best guess when will we start to see revival of growth towards the let's say double digit or even mid teens level because if we sustain at uh, you know single digit level the book growth by you know sometimes first half next year could come down quite rapidly so just want to understand you know do you have any visibility here on the growth revival thank you uh yeah so see uh, you know the the h2 and i've mentioned this the h2 growth for the wheels businesses are going to be i mean not to uh, we're not to bullish on a very strong uh, recovery uh, just basis what's happening in the underlying uh, demand side we have seen demand side squeeze happening across different segments so what what we can anticipate is there could be some amount of traction in this festive period uh and in specific segments which might see some recovery quickly tractor uh so the whole year disbursements still would be uh would would not be very uh, aggressive when i've mentioned it you know we are currently at two we can possibly maximum if we buy more market share grow up by another end of year uh, maximum about 200 bps more uh when you look at the next year and the next 2 3 years uh, by that time we might have some more levers available to us uh, you know i'm giving you not an fy26 guidance or a 27 guidance but a three year guidance not guidance but an aspiration is to clearly have uh, 
disbursement kagger in the corridor of uh, mid teens and that would only be possible if we get some of our new businesses to also start firing and protect market share in the wheels businesses got it sir and next one is a bit of a medium term question on the credit calls you know understand that in the interim you know we have uh coverage reversals as a result of a good improvement on the loss ratio but at some point of time you know the coverage ratio will normalize and the you know credit costs going forward should trend you know more similar to our net pages which you know obviously this year doesn't seem to be coming down versus last year so how should we think about the medium term credit costs and also you know uh do we expect the uh, medium term slippages to be much lower and is it either through you know a better industry cycle or we have uh, you know material plans or structural improvement on our end thank you see the overall credit cost uh, which is a uh, since you're looking at a more medium term outlook uh, you know we we are uh, we have come down significantly from our peak level so uh being at the 3.4 3.8 we were at end of last fiscal at 3.4 we are now 3.8 so there is a certain amount of base which we have come to which is uh largely the you know we're looking at now uh making sure that the incremental flow forwards from the stage 2 stage 3 doesn't happen and whatever is recently flown into stage 3 to recover as much from there so credit cost is a is a summation of provisions that would hit you if you're stock levels of gs3 and gs2 goes up and that's what i mentioned uh, in this environment uh, we are placing a lot of focus on our collection teams equipping them more using much more uh, uh, you know analytics to use which toolkits for which customers to just make sure that the incremental flow forwards don't happen so that the stock doesn't increase and invite more provisions uh, when it comes to end losses i've already given you a picture about Uh, an end losses is basically a summation of what moves from the existing gs3 portfolio to write off which we do at 36 months that number we have reasonable confidence of it being uh, you know trending down because the stock of flow forward itself is reducing and uh, we are managing to have settlement losses when we since we are repossessing vehicles quicker and disposing them off quicker the losses we incur from uh disposals are going down so let's say we were incurring 100 rupees on a on a sale of an asset now we are incurring uh, you know uh, you know 100 rupees loss now we are incurring 90 rupees so that that reduction on both the side should see credit cost uh you know for us if we are able to keep the incremental flow forward at at levels which are in that as i said for a business model like ours we should be able to keep credit costs in the 1.2 to 1.5 corridor right even in a in a in a cycle which is looking a little challenging so this so thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of neeraj toshinwal from ubs securities please go ahead yeah hi uh, so what is uh, sir how much uh, we already passed on and how much uh, space we more have in this year and continue to do neeraj uh, the your voice was a bit uh, you know unclear could you just repeat that please hi uh, is it better now yes. so uh, my question is how much is uh, it is we already passed on uh, and and this is for the scope to you know pass on the uh, in implementing uh, so it is going to use to passing on to the customers yeah so we we just to be fair to all the disclosures that are done so far we don't give an asset to asset category but all i could say is that in the last two i mean you know in uh, q1 and q2 there's been a uh, there's been a steady increase uh, passed on specifically in the pv segment uh, we have we are already as you know in certain segments like tractor etc us versus banks versus other nbfcs we have already been at a high level so those segments we are uh, to be competitive we are not increase but in the pv segment we do we have passed on uh, one could say that some of the mix change also because uh, our incremental sourcing in used has gone up so 
at an overall incremental uh, uh, incremental yield we have seen some benefits from that segment shift and uh, you know as as our cost of funds are not going down it makes sense for us to as and when we can pass on to pass on with the same amount of uh, uh, with the same amount of uh, uh, levels that we are seeing in our cost of funds so i i could say in q1 and q2 there's been a steady increase in incremental uh, irs being passed on between quantify uh, how much the increase has been Vivek, do we just to be sure? Do we publish this data? No, we we don't. But we can look at uh, your input yeah, is yeah. taken. We can look at making this a disclosure from next time onwards. So, oh, and on cost of income, uh, just what are the this is better because in the also the income overall net uh, income is higher. So where do we? Uh, yes, I'm sorry, to... but uh, while we can hear you, your voice is very muffled. So, um, can you come closer or just speak slower? Maybe we'll be able to catch you. Uh, so cost to income. Uh, uh, so overall, as overall revenue has increased due to fees in some pool, we instead want to build uh, in the cost to income ratio for uh, future. So these are guidelines. Are you talking about cost to income ratios? Yes. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, cost to income has you know it's come down to if I recollect closer to a forty percent. uh you, you could recollect this number was uh, what yeah, page number yeah yeah thank you yeah I, i remember seeing it as about 40% at a peak it was closer to a 43% uh cost to income yeah yes sir so one to which i can sustain or is there further improvement room available from here Yes, yeah, it is. Our uh, we would like to increase the numerator more than the denominator. Uh, sorry, the denominator more than the numerator. So, uh, so uh, you know, the kind of uh, activities on the numerator side would be as we build out the mortgage business uh, and some of the new businesses. They will invite cost, but uh, we are just hoping that uh, more of the revenue and, and in, as you know, we've kind of seeded some new activities on fee-based income, etc., which should. uh which should keep this number in this range i mean ideally for a business like ours being lower than 40 would be would be actually better because somewhere between 38 to 40% so that thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of gaurav sharma from hspc please go ahead yeah, am i audible yeah yes, sir you are Yeah, so thank you for giving me an opportunity. Just one question on your rural housing book. So the the GNP has been higher since long, although it has decreased by on by a wide basis, but it increased on sequentially. So what are the action plans you are taking to improve the credit quality in those segments? Yeah, so the uh, the the rural housing finance, if you look at the overall picture, while they have uh, had a challenge, they have seen. you know the gs3 numbers come down i think now to close to 9 uh, same time last year was 12% and uh, it's been i would say from last q1 it's been almost uh, flattish to come down a bit right and and let's let's also understand that the denominator is really not increasing a lot we are we are focusing more on collections uh, another number that we are rationalizing the organization also if you see from last quarter same time from you know close to 10000 employees about 3 and a half thousand employees have also reduced uh, so we are rationalizing the organization we are making sure most of the staff in the collection functions are uh, since we have also exited most of the low ticket housing loans uh, the overall theme at uh, at this subsidiary is to uh, ensure that we are able to uh, get the asset quality under control there is no growth compulsion at the moment and when we look at the asset quality also it is going to be largely from recoveries and uh, you know settlements uh, that we do uh, not, not by getting the gs3 percentage down by increasing the denominator or increasing the book so this is this is a patch of time wherein the the management team is uh, focused on getting the ship in order as i mentioned we've got jaspreet who's come in to head mortgages at mahindra finance but we have currently seconded him uh, to the rural housing finance company 
to also provide leadership uh, guidance and leadership uh, of bench strength to get this organization at least in the next two quarters uh, you know the aspiration to get the gs3 numbers closer to the 5 and a half 6% levels understood understood sir thank you so much sir that was my only question thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for today we have reached the end of our q and a session i would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments uh thank you thank you praveen access team uh, so it's uh, and thank you everyone for joining us on this call uh, as as we have mentioned it's been a, a quarter which has had its challenges uh, we are cognizant of the external environment and for us in an environment where uh, we've got to uh, we've got to make sure that the asset quality is top priority uh, we are we are spending a lot of attention in in the collection outfit in making sure like the similar collection war room which we brought into action uh, post covid uh, that office is pretty much set up to make sure that uh, we have all our uh, you know all our initiatives running well for uh, for making sure that in this scenario we are top of mind in uh, in ensuring that customers prioritize us for collections at the same time when there are growth constraints overall as the macros uh, for the wheels business don't look extremely uh, positive uh, we are making sure that we find our areas of growth within the you know we have our green shoots and we are able to identify and exploit them so it's a fine balance is always between growth margins and risk and the organization is prioritizing that uh, we we want to wish all of you all we know we are in the right in the middle of of the festive season uh, so the upcoming Uh, Diwali is a very important period for us to get even some of the business volumes and uh, wishing all of all of you and your families a very happy Diwali and a happy festive season uh, going ahead thank you again praveen and team thank you on behalf of access capital limited that concludes this conference thanks for joining us you may now disconnect your lines